wrong all these years. I, there was a huge revelation here and I'm like, girlfriend, I don't think you understand how much you're spending on this. Hello today, we are doing a grocery audit for Susanna and wow, did I find a lot of things that she could cut. Hey guys, we need your help reaching 400,000 subscribers. Would you please hit that subscribe button if you are loving these videos. Give us a thumbs up and a like and hit that notification bell if you want notices on how to save more money. Now, Susanna says that she spends about $500 a month on groceries for her, her husband, and her 11-year-old daughter. And two to 300, we'll say 300, because usually people way underestimate, on eating out. So she's spending $800 feeding her family of three a month. Yeah, that's a lot of money. She says that she wastes a lot of food she will do good for a week or two and then get really busy or lazy and then head to fast food. Her daughter doesn't necessarily like her food, but she likes to cook and she's getting better, but really not good. She said her biggest cooking problem is that she works a lot, she gets in a mood and heads for fast food and she's not a good planner. She is the type of person that cooks a, one day and is good, so they eat it, and then the next time I cook, it doesn't turn out, and we order pizza. My husband is a good cook and helps a lot. Okay, that is great that your family is on board. I think it just sounds like you need to get a few things organized. We're gonna go through and look at what you purchased and how you can start saving money and to learn how to cook so it's not so difficult. Okay, I'm gonna try to show one week what I consider like a non, this is a very non-traditional week. This is like, I would consider my bad week. And then I'm gonna also show a good week. So there's Twix and Reese's. They're to stuff the pinata for my sister's birthday party we're having tomorrow. Okay, we're gonna stop right there. Now, <laughs> I totally get that you are got a birthday party for your sister, but for those, for those, candies. I never buy candies full price. Always. The end of Halloween is coming up. 75% off. Christmas is coming up. Easter. I hit those three main holidays. They do 50% usually the, the day after Christmas and then it's 75 a week after Christmas and then 10 days after Christmas or whatever holiday. It is 90% off. So I buy a stash hide it from the family, then for parties and things like that, then I will bring the stash out, but I'm not paying, let's see, you paid a ridiculous amount for this. You paid almost $8 for candy for a pinata that you could have gotten for $2. I would definitely cut that out. Those are also for the party for the kids. I also have two, two liters in the car that I just left in there. Uh, Okay, so now you've got Kool-Aid jammers and sodas. You paid two, four, six, eight. You paid almost $10 just for drinks for this party. Now, I don't know if you're taking it to somewhere else or something like that, but even at that, I still wouldn't do it. What I would do is get a package of Kool-Aid, just regular old Kool-Aid. Guys, it is the same thing. I know it's not individual servings, but Kids can drink Kool-Aid out of a cup. They don't need the special packets by themselves. Now, I know that I have always said that I never, ever, ever buy the little jammer things, but or the little packets of Kool-Aid and stuff, but guess what? The other day, my Walmart had Capri Suns for $1 a box, yes. They're normally, I think, $2.68, I can't remember, I'll put the picture up here. So I got 10 boxes, they're hidden downstairs from the boys, and I'm saving those for things like the parties, when which my kids are getting old enough that we're not really doing that that much anymore, but occasionally for school or something, they'll have a party. So I will take those and I will have saved myself a ton of money, 10 cents instead of 25 or 30 cents for one of those little serving sizes, which half the time the kids throw them away, half of it away anyway, which really irritates me. But I would just go get some regular Kool-Aid and just make some Kool-Aid from scratch at home. A packet of Kool-Aid is 30 cents to make the same amount. So by the time you add your sugar, we're talking 60 cents instead of $2.68 for one of those packets and you got two packets and two things of soda. 
not a necessity at all. Um, orange juice for my daughter. Okay, now on the orange juice. Listen, your daughter doesn't need orange juice. Now, it's on sale right now, two for four dollars, instead of the two sixty-eight or something you said that you paid for it. But it sounds like you guys are wanting to pay off some debt. I would cut that out. There's no need for orange juice, and especially pre-made orange juice. That cost you that cost you three dollars. Yeah, I know you don't have to make it, but you could save 50 cents just by getting the concentrate at Walmart. But I would wait until it goes on sale at your store. You have plenty of stores there. I know it will go on sale. And then stock up when it goes on sale and put that in your freezer. Get, you know, four or five in your freezer and get them stocked up. And that way you will start saving on that. But that is a treat, not a staple. That is not something that my family drinks every single day, whether they want it or not. My family loves it too, but I don't buy it for them to have just every day. I'll bring one out maybe once a month and we'll have orange juice once a month. And when that's gone, we don't drink anymore. It's water. I know that this is like, I'm assuming that you guys would be like, no, this is terrible. Yes, it is. <laughs> it is absolutely terrible. I'm not. I used to go to Dunkin' Donuts pretty much every single morning for the past couple of years. And I have not gone to Dunkin' or Starbucks since May 23rd. So I'm like doing this instead of, I don't know, maybe I'm still bad. Okay. Okay, that's good that you haven't gone to Dunkin' or Starbucks, but yes, that is still pretty bad. And I'm gonna walk you through that here because that is crazy expensive. Okay, so I totally understand that, and I think that's great that you've stopped going to Dunkin' Donuts to get your regular coffee, but that is still ridiculously expensive. And we're gonna go through your whole thing of your coffee. I, there was a huge revelation here, and I'm like, girlfriend, I don't think you understand how much you're spending on this. So by getting that Dunkin' coffee creamer, it is costing her $3.94. For the same amount at home, she can make it for probably a dollar to a dollar fifty. Keep it in the fridge and pour it in your refrigerator. Now I know you're busy and you're working, but $800 is a ridiculous amount of money to be spending on food for three people, even if you're working. So I would make your own and here's how you do it. This recipe is in the description below and in our Dining on Dine cookbook volume two, I believe. Okay, you're gonna take your milk and you're going to take your pumpkin puree. Right there, I really like pumpkin, so I went a little extra more. Pumpkin spice. Um, vanilla, this is my homemade vanilla, sugar, then you're going to whiz the whole thing up. Then you're just going to put the lid on and store that in your refrigerator up to a week. Now you can double this, of course, if you use a lot of it. But this here costs about $1.50 for the full amount versus the same amount that she gets at the store. I believe it's the same amount. It's cool. She paid almost $4 for that. Milk for cereal, eggs were a dollar. This is what I'm gonna make for one day. The, it's like a ravioli um, lasagna type of situation in the crock pot. Okay, that ravioli was almost $9. That is super expensive for a dinner. Now. For three people, you'll probably get dinner and a lunch out of there. So I'm okay with that, I guess. But just realize that is pretty expensive for a dinner for three people. Was running low on spices. I've been drinking these instead of we'll trying to drink less pop. A little treat for me. This is, like I said, I know it's like not really that good. <laughs> I feel like it's expensive. But it's still better than Dunkin', I feel like. Or, you know, actually going to the to the actual you know place okay we're gonna talk about this because you've got a problem and the first step is admitting that you have a problem you are spending seven dollars and 98 cents on 10 pods of coffee that 
is ridiculously expensive. That is $2.16 each. If you would just get regular folder, Folgers, that would be 38 cents a serving. If you would get just regular Walmart coffee, it would be 35 cents a serving. And really, you're putting so much creamer in there, are you really gonna taste the difference? I doubt it. I seriously doubt it. So, you could cut it back to get the Walmart coffee for 35 cents, but then if you bought your coffee on sale, it would be 28 cents if you bought it on sale. So right here, it's on sale this week for $7 for Folgers even. That's the name brand. That's not even the Walmart store brand. But even at that, if you just got Dunkin' regular coffee, if you just insist on having Dunkin' regular coffee, instead of being $2.16, it would be, oh my goodness, I just realized something in my calculations. Holy cow, girl, you don't know how, this is, okay, this is ridiculously expensive, and you have to cut this out. Okay, I mislooked at the numbers, and as I'm going back again, I'm like, are you, are you kidding me? Are you absolutely kidding me? $2.16 an ounce is what you're spending. Those little curate pots don't even have an ounce of coffee in each one. Oh my goodness. So you're paying $2.16 an ounce instead of even just buying the regular coffee and brewing it for 59 cents an ounce. And if you would get it on sale, Folgers on sale, you would be paying 20 cents an ounce. That is crazy. So the Dunkin' Little Pod things don't even have an ounce in each one of the little pods. That, you need to cut that out right now. That is just ridiculously expensive. This is for a recipe I saw on uh, the internet and I'm gonna go get it. I gotta go get the chicken tomorrow. That's something I feel like I did good. Like the chicken was more expensive at Walmart. So I'm gonna go to Jewel tomorrow and get it for $1.99 a pound. Okay, so that is really good that you are going to the other store to get the chicken for cheaper. That's great. What I would do is get two of them and stock up so that you have one in the freezer or three, have them in the freezer for later so that you can start paying only sale prices for your food. I have done it with just the freezer on my fridge, just fine. I had three kids at the time. I didn't have a big freezer. I just use the freezer on my fridge and you buy the most expensive meats on sale, store them in your freezer and then just pull them out. It, I don't think you're putting things in the freezer to pull out later to make it easier for you cooking. So I think that would really help you if you purchased your meats on sale, put them in the freezer and then pull them out to make dinner later. Now, as far as the gravy, I don't waste money on those little packets. I really don't understand why why people waste money on the gravy packets. So here's how you make gravy at home. It's super easy. Just like the packets, the same ingredients as the packets. So as I was editing, I realized my camera was not on, but all I did was add one cup of water to the pan, bring it to a boil, put in my bouillon cube, which is much cheaper and takes up a lot less space than those big cartons of stock. So that's how I started making okay, my I gravy. just realized that I put two cups in here instead of one. Oops. <laughs> but I got a bouillon cubes. So I'm just gonna show you the process and you'll get it. But cornstarch and water in your boiling water and then just let it thicken. Seriously, this is it. The trick to no lumpy gravy is putting the cornstarch in the water and letting it dissolve first. If it gets lumpy, just take an immersion blender and zap it. It'll take the lumps out, but that's all you do. All lettuce for salads when I had the ravioli. Okay, now, romaine lettuce, I get it. It's nice, it's tasty, but it is double the price of iceberg. So I would cut that out also and stop getting romaine. I like the taste too, but iceberg is half the price, so I would buy the iceberg. Stop the presses! I just scared Jack. <laughs> I think I'm wrong on this, actually. So I'm gonna see if I'm wrong or not. Say that again. 
<laughs> you want me to say that I'm wrong again, dear? Yes. <laughs> okay. So after looking at this editing, I think romaine actually may be cheaper than iceberg. So I pulled out the core here and I got, I think this is the same batch she got. Now I'm gonna do the Walmart price. I paid $5 for this because Walmart was out and that's ridiculous. So I'm gonna cut off all of these edges. So this is organic stuff? <clears throat> no, it's not organic, but oh. it's just super expensive because it was at the little store. Mm. Okay, Mike, can you get the calculator ready? One pound, seven ounces. So 16 plus seven is 23, is that right? 23 ounces of romaine and iceberg, we have 12 ounces right there. Okay, can you calculate, dear? That's 23, that's 12. Mm -hmm. Well, that's almost double this weight. Okay, so 298 divided by 23. Okay, so the romaine is 13 cents per ounce and, and um, a dollar, a dollar 77 divided by 12, 15 cents per ounce. <gasps> I can't believe I've been wrong all these years because I didn't calculate my lettuce. Say that again. I was wrong. Wow. Do you need to hear it again, dear? Oh my goodness, so romaine is actually cheaper than the iceberg. Inquiring minds want to know? I answered the question for you. This is something I saw on YouTube as well. A little cake mix and French bread. So according to this receipt, you spent $94. And let me tell you, out of that $94, over $30 was spent only on drinks that is ridiculous you are literally flushing your money down the toilet literally flushing your money down the toilet drinks have no additional nutritional value milk and maybe orange juice might have a little bit of nutritional value but it is definitely not necessary at all i would cut out all of those drinks get your coffee down to where you're using only coffee that you purchase on sale with homemade creamers. Sorry I, that you are doing way, way better than going to Dunkin' Donuts every day, but $30 out of 90 for one week just in drinks is ridiculous. The store I go to that is kind of considered the more expensive grocery store. Yes, it is. Albertsons that we have here is the same chain. It is the most expensive grocery store, but they do have good sale items, which I was very impressed with you picking those up. This was originally $4.99, but I got it for $1.99. This was, I don't know, $1.50. It was normally four or five bucks. More drinks. You gotta cut out these drinks. Lemonade is not a necessity at all. Got these Yo Plays for 59 cents each. And then this was supposed to be $1.99 a pound. It was a flash deal. And it's supposed to be three pounds. So it was supposed to come up around six bucks. So, and I mean, this was, I can put this into maybe six different, you know, little plastic baggies. And that can last me for a couple weeks. If I have a casserole or something, I'll put in a bag of it, you know, pick up a bag of it. Anyway, so it was supposed to be around $6. When I got to the... Uh, check out it was ringing up as 11 bucks so I checked again I talked to the lady and she was really nice and she went and talked to the manager and the manager said just make sure you take care of my customer customer which obviously it really really was their fault because it should have it shouldn't have been closer to six it said on the deal it said most of the chub should be closer to six dollars but anyway so then she had this and she knew it was ring up as 4.99 so she just rang that up and so I got this for $4.99, which I feel like is a great deal. Like I said, I'll put it into different, you know, containers. So that is a really good deal. $1.66 a pound for hamburger is great. Good for you for standing up to the store when they were ringing up wrong. People need, you guys, you have to watch when it's ringing up 
because I tell you probably 90% of the time that I go to the store, something rings up wrong. And it's to the point now where I take a picture of clearance items to prove that's the price because that's where the big one is on me is the clearance item. So if I start seeing a habit of the store pricing a particular item wrong, I will take a picture of it and show them. So then here's the receipt. So all of that for $9.93 with tax, $10.42. And I'm gonna look, get a screenshot of the Walmart, how much this would normally be, but I feel like that's a great deal. So this is what I feel like is one of the better things that I do. I go through the store and try to see the actual deals. But I mean, these might not really be considered the best deal because obviously I know yogurt in a tub is better, but I don't know. I feel like just a little variety is nice. Okay, so I totally understand it, but yogurt is a huge expense that most people have now. I was shocked at how many people are buying these little things of yogurt. Now, Dining on a Dime Cookbook, volume one, right here, we have how to make yogurt. Volume two, we have how to make Greek yogurt. If you made this at home, it would cost you 13 cents for the same little six ounce Yoplait yogurt that you got there. So. Just make the homemade yogurt, stir in some jam or jelly for your extra flavorings and a little extra sugar if you want. You can do it for 13 cents versus the 59 cents that you paid. 13 cents versus 59 cents, I would totally do that. So if you were to buy the big tubs at Walmart, it would cost you 40 cents, about 43 cents, instead of getting the little ones. 40 cents per the serving instead of 59. So. Yes, those little yogurts, they actually are a huge waste of money. And there aren't any. <laughs> I went to, oh, okay, let's go see if those work. I think those are organic though. But yeah, that would be my deal if it was there. Okay, now she got the, she was looking for the raspberries for 99 cents for six ounces. That is crazy expensive also. Um, first of all, that type of thing, I just don't buy at all that's ridiculously expensive unless I get them for super super cheap late summer or free from neighbors or something I will but even though 99 cents for six ounces is really good two dollars and 64 cents a pound is super expensive for fruit so raspberries they are cut out of our budget we don't even eat anything fancy schmancy like raspberries even at 90 cents even at 99 cents for six ounces that's crazy expensive Okay, this one I consider more of a typical haul. This is for sandwiches. Okay, let's stop on the cheese. Now, what I would do is instead of buying the cheese at Walmart, which is $2.22, I would buy it on sale for $1.47. It was just on sale like two weeks ago at my Albertsons, which is the same as your Jewel. It was just on sale two weeks ago for $1.47. So what I would do is stock up when it's on sale instead of paying the full price because you will save almost a dollar on each of those. This will last me like a month. I'll just eat one or two and then my daughter eat one or two and then every couple days. Gone for work, making like a casserole that I saw. Okay, so that ham is $5 a pound. That is crazy expensive. So I would not buy that ham. What I would do is when Thanksgiving and Christmas come up, I would get a full ham for 99 cents a pound or $1.27 a pound. That's, I know that's what they're gonna be on sale for. Get that, bring it home and cut it up into slices and put it in your freezer. Just put it into freezer baggies. Yes, it's cheaper to use freezer, freezer baggies than to pay $5 a pound for that ham. So that dinner could have been reduced by probably $4 if you would have bought your ham on sale. You can also slice it up into smaller pieces for ham sandwiches for lunch so that you're not buying the lunch meat sandwich also. And that is crazy expensive too. It is $8 a pound for that lunch meat sandwich. That's crazy expensive, crazy expensive. So get ready in about six weeks hams are going to be going on sale so get one cut it up put it in the freezer and then you can just pull out a packet and if it gets too wet because sometimes the freezer makes uh condensation form around your food and it gets it has more moisture 
So just put it between two paper towels, just soak up the extra moisture after it's defrosted and it'll be perfectly fine. It's not gonna hurt the ham or anything. Making um, like Philly cheesesteak sloppy joes. This, cause I was craving it. But I guess this will go with the soup and sandwiches. It's getting a little rainy here. Yep, okay, another treat. You're getting yourself a lot of treats. I'm noticing you really like the treats and you're treating yourself and I think you're working so you're tired and so you feel like you deserve it is what I'm kind of getting the feeling. So really you need to start acknowledging that, that you don't deserve it. You're working to pay your bills and so really, Sorry, but you don't deserve it. This, because I was craving it. See, again, more, just because you're craving it or just because you want it. I'm glad that you got the name brand at Walmart, but still, those types of things are what I ask for Christmas from the big guy. Yeah, he bring, he fills my stocking with, with the green olives and all those little jams and jellies that I love. Those kinds of things, those always show up in my stocking at Christmas. So, those kinds of things are a treat. They're not a necessity. And milk for just every day. But this was about, I think about 40 bucks. I got, I gotta send a screenshot. But this is more a typical week. So out of that $40, you could have saved one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine you could have saved at least out of that forty dollars at least ten maybe fifteen dollars depending on what you use the mushrooms for i would have got canned mushrooms instead of regular mushrooms and that would have saved also okay so i'm i'm saying that you can cut at least forty percent off of your grocery bill just by buying things on sale and cutting out the drinks so oh, here she goes on her prices. Yes, I, yep, okay, I can see that. And yeah, you got a lot of expense here that's just really not non-necessities that aren't really necessary. Whoa, and there's donuts. Oh, uh, you didn't show the donuts in there. <laughs> Did you already eat the donuts? Girl, you're buying a lot of treats. Okay, now let's take a look at your fridge and freezer. In my fridge, so I got eggs, we got creamers, milk, whipped cream. You got a lot of drinks. You got whipped topping. You got at least two creamers, three milks, and or half and half and two milks, and it looks like orange juice in the back. You have a lot of money invested in drinks and treats. Oh. We got, this is, I actually showed this in the last video, but that's the pumpkin spice cake I made. If you guys need a good pumpkin spice cake, go to the link in the description below and we will show you how to make it. I'm getting more drink stuff, my ham, my chicken. More drinks. You, do you realize you have an entire shelf of just drinks for three people? Here we have more creamer and three more juices, water. Water is a perfectly fine drink. Learn to just enjoy plain water, just plain water. You live in Illinois, your water should be perfectly fine. Put it in the refrigerator, make it cold, let the chlorine evaporate, and then your water will taste good. The meats and cheeses and tortillas, produce. Okay, these, Colored peppers are not a necessity. I know they're pretty and I know they're nice, but you do not need colored peppers. Yeah, $3 for red peppers, no. That's that's way expensive. $1.48 for one red pepper, but the pack you got, it looks like it was $3, so no. That is expensive and I would cut that out. I ended up and use a ground turkey later. And then just condiments, 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 etc. Oh, I'm gonna need to make, I think I showed that in the last grocery, grocery haul. And there's my cute pup. And I, oh, there's a cute little puppy dog. Uh, <laughs> but I would make that Hershey syrup. I would make that homemade for a lot less. Here's my freezer. I got these sausages I just had. I got oh, of stuff back here. I think I have some chicken tenders. That's shrimp, my husband bought that. Shrimp is not in the frugal budget, period. 
Sorry, I know it tastes really good, but it is not a frugal food at all. I know you're blaming the hubby on that, but shrimp does not come in the house if you are having to pay off debt. I got lots of frozen fruits because my daughter loves to make smoothies. Okay, so on the smoothies, that needs to be cut out. I don't know how many she's making, but if she's making more than one or two a week, that's way more than she should be making. She can use canned fruit. My boys make smoothies with fruit cocktail, peaches, pears, and frozen bananas. But I would not be buying expensive fruits like raspberries and strawberries and blueberries for, for smoothies. Chicken and mystery meat from I don't know when. Okay, so get that mystery meat out, get it defrosted, figure out how you're gonna use it. Do it on a Friday night and then Saturday you'll know what you're gonna use it for so you're not having to worry about, you know, at work, oh, what am I gonna be eating for dinner? But that way on Saturday you can take time to figure out what you're gonna eat with it. Those are like the um, pancake and sausage corn dog things. My daughter loves those for breakfast in the morning. Those things are super expensive. She can have a bowl of cereal, she can have a couple of eggs and some toast, but those pre-made breakfasts are pretty expensive. Here's onions in here. Okay, here's a little tip for the onions. If you store them in the refrigerator, they will not make you cry. So I would put those in your refrigerator and store them, and then when you go to cut them, you won't be crying. This is honestly like just a huge mess I need to go through, but that's like months and months and months of, we get a little snack here, we do a little bit there, and we forget about it. <laughs> so I wouldn't say this is like, one, okay, there's some Pringles back there. I wouldn't really say this is, I mean, it might kind of look like a problem thing because it's looks like a ton of junk food. But I mean, like those goldfish were probably from like one of the goldfish I did actually just buy a couple weeks ago. But like the popcorns from months ago, you know, we just kind of pick at it here and there. There's my little drink things that I do use a lot. Okay, I think you're in denial. I'm really sorry, but you are in denial. I noticed in your buying how many treats and junk food and drinks you're getting. I think you say this might be months and months and it might be for like the popcorn, but really I think you're spending a lot more than you realize on snacks and that type of thing. Focusing on your meals and then you're not eating so many snacky, treaty, junk food type stuff. Now, as for organizing, yes, get this space organized and when we get, I'm gonna, tell you in just a minute what to use this space for, but I would definitely get this space organized. It will literally take you 10 minutes to, to organize this. Just take one evening or one Saturday, sit down, get this organized, and you'll be ready to go. This is, uh, once again, this is from that expensive grocery store I was talking about. Well, not all of it, but like this is that I, and some of these apples are. So I go and get the good deals at the expensive store, whatever's on sale that week. Cucumbers from the garden, tomatoes from the garden, bananas from Aldi. This is kind of the spices slash, you know, condiments slash, I don't know, spreads, peanut butters, anything in here that we're going to use. Lots of mostly spices. Some of this stuff needs to be organized. As you can see, beans, tomatoes, more spices. I think that's cornbread mix. So there's that. There's this one. Okay, so literally 10 minutes again to get this organized. It is not that bad. Get your peanut butters together, get all your spices together, and then get that thing organized and you will have more space to buy some things on sale and put them in there, okay? But that looks really good. This is oatmeal, bread, chips, all the cereal I got on sale. I think $1.99 or a dollar. So I didn't just get it. Look at it like it's <laughs> going stale. Okay, I'm gonna show how unorganized and chaotic I am. But anyways though, I'll fix that. I'll, I will fix that when I'm done with the, with the video, but. Okay, so that's some cereal. We eat that. My husband loves the oatmeal. My daughter and I eat the cereal for snacks. Okay, now. I don't know if it's just me. I don't know. You guys comment and let me know because maybe it's just me, but I cannot stand to see food piled on top of my refrigerator and cabinets. We had a neighbor one time where I was watching their cats and I walked in and their, their stairs went up and they had a ledge going over their kitchen. And 
the tops of their cabinets, like, you know, like over here, and their refrigerator was just solid with food. It was unbelievable. Of course, it was all junk food. Now, yours is cereal, but I, for some reason, I cannot stand having stuff on my refrigerator that's food. I don't mind decorations, but food drives me crazy. So part of your organization, what I would do is that snack cabinet that you had, I would get another shelf and put it in there and then get all those snacks consolidated and get them put together like items together and neaten those up on a, like a top shelf. And then on the bottom shelf, lay your cereals down sideways and they should slide in there long ways. And then you could stack all your cereals on that bottom shelf there, all your snacks on top and all your, all your cereals on the bottom. That will get all of that out of your sight so that you're not seeing all this mess all the time having to deal with it. And that way it's out of the way, out of sight. Now for three people, six boxes of cereal is a lot to have out at one time. I would say three boxes of cereal maximum at any time. Um, I usually say one box of cereal per person. Now it doesn't look like you have a lot of storage space. So if you stock up on cereal on sale, then I would just find another place to put it or just don't open those boxes until the other ones are finished. Okay, so Susanna, what would I do? I would definitely get our Dining on a Dime cookbooks with your $100 that you're going to get to our store. I would definitely get my Dining on a Dime cookbooks. Go and make some easy recipes. You said your daughter doesn't like your cooking. I don't know what she doesn't like about it, but Listen, mom, you're fixing dinner. She needs to be eating it. I try to always have at least one food that my kids like at dinner. She needs to stop eating so many snacks and fill up on dinners. Make my honey baked chicken, make my maple glazed chicken. If you like Mexican food, green chili, make spaghetti. Have her pick out recipes that she likes. Have her tell you foods that she wants to eat so that all three of you can be planning meals together and all three of you can have foods that you like and enjoy. The next thing I would do is make sure the night before you have planned out what you're gonna have for dinner the next day. I would just write it down. This is my undated planner here, but I would just write it down for the night before and then you know what meat you need to pull out of the freezer to defrost. I would definitely stop buying everything at full price, get those meats in the freezer, get some of those expensive fruits and things out of the freezer and use that space for meats. Only buy fruits like apples and oranges that are on sale. None of the fancy fruits, sorry, but those are just really expensive and you need to be cutting down your grocery bill. Also, Another thing, as you're menu planning, I would check out our Dining on a Dime cookbook. We have five pages of menus here, okay? And if it would help you to write down the week's worth of menus, go ahead and do the week's worth of menus, but at a minimum, the night before, figure out what you're having the next day. That way, that's what my mom did when she was a working mom, and that's how she was able to never eat out. We never ate out and she was still working three jobs, able to still cook at home every meal. That way, if you're gonna have chili that night for dinner, you can just get it all thrown in the crock pot in the morning before you go to work. Don't be afraid to use your oven on low at 200 degrees all day long, simmering a roast or baking a roast on low and it's super juicy and yummy when you get home. It literally takes three minutes to make. I'll show you how to make it right here real quick.
yummy. I got potatoes boiling. Ooh, it's not quite done yet. Okay, so how do I know it's not quite done? Because when I go like this, it doesn't fall apart. So I'm gonna turn it over and let it cook for a few more hours. And I'm actually gonna baste it also. Also, other dinners that you could make, you could throw in chilies or green chilies. You could do, you could do the three ingredient chicken where you put chicken with taco seasoning. We are making chicken tacos. This three ingredient recipe is super easy. Just put in your chicken breasts. Now the recipe calls for four chicken breasts. I personally only use two chicken breasts and that gives us a lot of leftovers for our four people in our family. So I would say a huge chicken breast like this, one would be plenty for four people, but we wanna have leftovers for lunch. So I'm putting two chicken breasts in. Then if you buy the packets of taco seasoning, just put one packet in there. I don't, I make my own and it costs me just 10 cents for a huge bottle like this, which equals about probably 10, 15 packets. So I just sprinkle that on there. The recipe is in the link in the description below and in our Dining on a Dime cookbook, volume one. And then add one can of Rotel tomatoes and make sure that the tomatoes are evenly distributed over the top. We are going to put this on low for six to eight hours or high for three to four hours. And then we are going to let this simmer until the chicken is tender and can be pulled apart with two forks. Okay, so we got our chicken. Oh my goodness. Look how delicious that is. So just shred your chicken really well. So that's what slow cooking chicken will do. Our tacos. Yum. And number two. We have our lettuce and our cheese. Delicious slow cooked tacos. Oh my goodness. This is going to be so delicious. Mmm. Oh wow. That is really good. And literally five minutes worth of work for dinner. I think your main problem is just figuring out what to have for dinner. And if you force yourself to plan it ahead of time, instead of doing it when you get home from work, that will save you a lot. If you guys love this video, please go watch this video next. All the links for these recipes are in the description below and on our website at livingonadime.com.